Next, CMO of Fresh Shop, Bruce Keeler. And finally, please welcome to the stage our post-consumer brand representative, Jesse Garcia. Good morning. So uh, we just want to welcome you guys to uh, the session this morning, the uh, Super Breakfast session. Um, Post Consumer Brands is uh, very proud uh, to be one of the sponsors here this morning. Uh, we're also very proud supporters of NGA and also the Independent Grocer. Um, I think uh, given what's going on in the marketplace, the incredible change, uh, I think what you're going to find the, the topic this morning to be very relevant. Um, so we, get, we hope you get some uh, good insight out of it. Bruce? Yeah. Jesse said it right. Today's marketplace is in flux, but it's the independent supermarket industry that really continues to be part of that disruption, helping to anticipate and respond to consumer demands. Fresh Shop is pleased to be a longstanding partner of the NGA and a sponsor of this session. And I encourage all of you to find one or two things from this session this morning that you can take back and implement in your business right away. Okay, we're almost ready to kick off the program, but first a few housekeeping reminders before we get started. If you haven't done so already, please turn off your phones, and immediately following this session, our morning workshops will kick off at 8.15. On behalf of Chobani, I wanna thank you all for coming here today, and this week is a special time in Chobani's history. We are 10 years old this week. Uh, Hamdi, our founder, sold his first cup 10 years ago. So um, please tell your friends, your family, your wives, your husbands that uh, if they go to Chobani.com for the next three weeks, they can get a free Chobani for every man, woman, and child in the United States. So enjoy your Chobani this morning. Enjoy your Chobani when you go home. And I uh, really want to thank you all for, for coming today and uh, enjoy your breakfast. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harold Lloyd. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a really nice breakfast. When I was asked to um, submit a topic for this convention, everyone agreed that we should approach the, uh, the topic of the hard discounter. And as I did the research to prepare for it, I got uh, thinking about the, top, the title of it and realized that getting ready for a hard discounter would be pretty much like getting ready for any, any competitor. So I worry that some of you who may have seen the, the title would say, well, I don't have a Lidl or an Aldi coming into my market, so I really can sleep a little later or, or go for a longer run this morning. So this, this topic will apply to anyone who may be facing a competitor going forward. And um, I had the, the title that the NGA folks and I agreed with was the how to coexist with a hard discounter. Uh, but I couldn't get over an alternative title. And I snuck it in on the backside here. This alternative title of this session is How to Remain Relevant. And it's something we all face, especially I turned 65 in August, and you, know, you want to continue being relevant in, in the world and in your career and as a family member. So this seminar is be a little unlike the ones you may have been used to uh, seeing me do with 30 ideas to improve sales or 25 ideas to improve your freshness image. This is a little bit more upstairs, and I know I don't look capable of delivering that kind of a message, but 32 years I've been doing this teaching thing and, and learning thing, and I, I think I'm on to something that could be a big help to you. Oh, I sprinkled 10 or 12 uh, uh, ideas that you can use tomorrow to get back into business or the next day, but this one is, is big, and, and I'm very uh, proud that you're here and, and that I can share it with you, and I hope, I hope you agree with it. So how to remain relevant. My name is relevant. I want to be relevant in everything I do. So I need a few volunteers, and this is not set up at all. I could get really embarrassed. Where are my retail? Oh, I know I got one here. Oh, my God, Jacob. Jacob, you're up at that table right there. And 
please, Jay. I need two more about retailers. Just two retailers just to sit at this table. I'm, not, I'm only going to ask you one question at the end of the session. Two retailers, grab your breakfast, finish it up up here. I got that a boy, Jacob. One more, uh, two more, please. Thank you very much. I got number two. And may I have a, a third on this side of the room? I know you're better looking than this side, but thank you very much. Very nice of you. You can bring your breakfast. Bring it up right on up there. Okay. Also, I'm going to ask you to do, Courtney, good to see you. Morning. Morning. Uh, is to answer a question. Uh, ask a question, Harold. Can you explain this a little further? Or... Here is the one thing I got out of the session. So this could be really embarrassing if you say, I didn't get anything out of that, Harold. You're, that was a waste. So there are my volunteers. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And, and here we go. I had seen this article in Progressive's Grocer, you know, Supermarket News, Shelby Report, Progressive Grocer. They help us, folks. And I want to ask you at the end of this session, when you read one of those three wonderful trade journals that you're thinking about your mission and everything you read is to feed that mission. But this article, if you can see in the very, very fine print, the year 2000. So mass mar monsters, are they nibbling away at the supermarket pie? 18 years ago we were asking this question. When I was a retailer, we were asking this question. And I, the answer is yes. Yes and yes, and they will continue to. In fact, back when I was a president of a family business, that was the scariest thing. That was the monster of the time. And then a few years later, this kind of a segue into the super centers and Walmart was created. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And nobody talks about Food Line anymore. I remember vividly food lions scaring the bejesus out of everybody on the East Coast. The low cost or low price formats. Then the club stores, this thing, oh, but they have a membership fee. They won't be, they're not our competitor. They're, 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 you have to charge, they charge a customer. Boy, I'd like to charge my customers to shop in my store. We've been talking a lot about the restaurants. In fact, years ago, I did a seminar on why restaurants are winning. And they have continued to grow and evolve and, 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 and challenge us. They're a monster for sure. And this, golly, have you been to a Wawa, a Quick Stop, or a Sheets lately? You might be afraid of Walmart, but if I was a retailer again, I'd be scared to, to death of one of these guys coming near, near me. They're fresh. They're quick. Wow. So the monsters keep coming. And that Aldi thing, that insidious Aldi thing that I kind of shrugged off years ago, but they just keep coming. And now with the, all, with the Lidl um, onslaught, they, they've upped their game even, even better. And then I couldn't break this apart, folks, because they're coming at us right at about the same exact time. That double whammy, the double-headed monster, the two-headed monster. So are, are the mass, are big guys coming and taking away our pie? Absolutely. And do you feel like the mouse under the foot of this elephant? Is it Amazon doing it to us this time or is it Lidl doing it this time? The point is there will always be one of these new things doing it to us. And somehow we, we keep surviving, but it's sometimes not that easy. Do you feel like this frog with your head just barely above water? And I'm a positive guy. I'm a really positive guy. I'm not a negative guy. I don't want to try to make it scare you, but I'm a positive guy, and I'm telling you there's bad news out there. You know, I'm not this Pollyanna thing, like all you got to do is buy and sell local, and all you got to do, man, it's scary without a focus. It's really scary if you don't have an identity. So, uh, unfortunately, with this seminar, like my others in the past, they're, 30 ideas to improve sales. There's no magic wand. There's no easy button. And there are no silver bullets on this one. So I'm sorry to disappoint you on, on that. What's it? It, there is none. There is none. The ones who are really doing well have earned it. My stepfather made me president right out of college and graduate school. Two days on Friday, I graduated University of Chicago. On a Friday afternoon, Monday morning, I was president of 14 stores. It was given to me. I didn't earn it. Was your business given to you and you haven't earned it lately? 
Well, these competitors will make us have to earn it now. There's no easy button, silver bullet, or magic wand. And hope is not a strategy. Uh, well, I hope, I heard Lidl's coming, but I hope they don't. I heard Walmart's turning into a, a super center, but I hope they don't. It, I hope they don't also, but that can't be a strategy. And this expression that I, if all goes well, oh my gosh. If all goes well, I'll be okay. Well, if all goes well, well, it won't. It won't all go well. So I told you, Lidl's coming, and look at their slogan. I think this is a kind of a heads up to us. Is this for their customers to identify with or a warning to us that we should rethink the way we do our business or certainly refocus? Rethink grocery. Oh, I'm not a big fan, but you'll see why there, there's something that we have to deal with. Oh, and by the way, whenever I talk to folks and say, okay, here comes Lidl or here comes Kroger, what do you got going for you? 90% of the people I meet say, oh, but we're the friendliest. Well, that's not enough anymore. When I started in my career as a teacher kind of consultant person, if you were a C minus operator on a grading scale that you're familiar with in school, a C minus, you made money. Oh my gosh, a B plus operator was bankrolling. And today, fact, you're breaking even as a B plus operator. You're breaking even as a B plus operator. That's a little discouraging, but here comes the good news, okay? Oh. And don't get too negative, okay? I don't want you to get too negative. I saw this guy right here, right here last year in a, in a buffet. <laughs> don't trust anybody. Well, don't get negative now. Don't get negative. Don't get disappointed. Don't get so discouraged. There's, there's hope, and here it is. I mean, I got the answer. I found the answer. Um, there's good news, and I have an expression I taught my son when he hit a golf ball on a major tournament into the water, and he pounded a club in on frustration. The only time I ever saw him pound a club in the ground. He get in the car and he said, Dad, I'm sorry I lost the tournament and I, I really blew it. And I said, no, you didn't blow the tournament. You blew your personality and our relationship to a degree because that wasn't my son who hit the, the ground with a club. That's a $300 club, Alex. It was your favorite three wood. And if that head flew off that club, which I couldn't believe it didn't, you'd have been playing all year long without a three wood. I might have bought you one for Christmas, but I would have never replaced that club. Alex, it wasn't that ball's fault that it went in the water. So why, or the club's fault. Why'd you beat the club? It was your fault. And as we're driving to Hardy's, which we always did after a, a golf tournament, win or lose, uh, I said, Alex, if you spent that energy and time thinking about what you did at contact to make that ball go on a little bit of a slice into the water, you'd have been further ahead than spending that time and energy on pounding the club in the ground. I said, Alex, you shouldn't agonize, analyze. And while you were stressing, I was, I've been thinking, why are some retailers doing so well? And others are wondering, uh, what's, next, what's the next day going to be? In fact, two, two weeks ago, I met a retailer and he said, Harold, uh, I got an offer to uh, buy my, my four stores. And I, and I said, what are you going to do? He said, what do you think I should do? I said, sell. He said, really, that quick? I said, yeah, because I'd never heard you say anything with such a positive attitude, like you just said, that somebody wanted to buy your four stores. You were more positive about that option than I've heard you in all the years I've known you. And he sold. Um, folks, if it's not in the heart, if it's not, I look, look forward to resetting that shelf or, or hiring that new employee, if that isn't in there anymore, it's died, move on. Be free, Willie, and sell. But if there is that fire, this is such good news um, that I hope to share with you. I've been blessed by being able, being able to work with some really wonderful operators over my 32 years of doing this. One of them was Publix. Ladies and gentlemen, they start every day, every meeting, every thought with their mission statement. And in their mission statement, there are six points of difference that they are focused on. It's amazing. 
I never met another company like them. Wegmans. Oh, I didn't even want to show them because that's all we talk about is Wegmans. Well, they're coming to Virginia Beach this coming, this coming year. They have the ground sc scraped. Big announcement. The whole town is abuzz with Wegmans coming to town. We were in the same buying group as Wegmans 100 years ago. Our private label brand was their private label brand. We were friends. I know about Wegmans. They are freaky focused on five points of difference. That's why they're great. They took their energy, their brains, and their money and focused on five things. They didn't scatter their shots. They didn't try to be great at everything or even good at everything. They wanted to be freaky great at a few things, and they succeeded. And then if you know me at all, you've known that I've been bragging on this company for ever since I've uh, joined a share group and Norman Maine was on it. And as a retailer, Norman was my idol, is my idol. Um, three stores, Dayton, Ohio, and every retailer tries to take them down and they just shrug them off. I mean, they work hard to shrug them off, but they shrug them off. Amazing. Great volume, small towns, and Kroger's flagship store is like a mile away. They are freaky focused on five points of difference as well. Everything they do is focused on those five things. Oh, they want to be good at everything, but great on a few things. They do have, folks, if there's two words you get out of this session, it's called a unified focus. And laying in bed last night, I'm trying to think of an analogy. Just think of yourself trying to pull against Lidl coming into your market. They're trying to take your market share, you're trying to keep it back. And it's tough because they got 10,000 stores pulling up against you, and you got your one or two or three. Now just think of your store manager got on board, and your district manager got on board, or your produce manager got at the end of the rope and started helping you pull. You're still going to be have hard pressed to beat them 10,000, but the, the more we got pulling on our end of this rope, the more unified we are on our focus, the more power we have. Unified focus has to be our goal in our organization, small or large. Key to, key to success is to focus your shots. I think the reason for failure is that we scatter our shots. We can't scatter our shots. We're pretty good at this, we're pretty good at that, we're good at this. We're almost good at that, and we're really friendly. Ouch. So, friends of mine, people I've worked with and know, know this sheep, but they don't really, because this is brand spanking new. It's the first audience to see it, in fact. I've updated it. I've hopefully perfected it. Um, and by the way, this whole handout, and this may be the best handout, pass out you'll ever have that has a long-term effect on your company is available at the NGA uh, website. I have 25 copies that I brought with me. I'm going to be in three booths this afternoon and tomorrow. I'll have some with me. I would love to send it to you if you, if you can't get it any other way. But here is the list. 25 points of difference. 25 ways to set yourself apart. And I've been working on that list for 23 or 4 years. It was 18 at one time, and I thought of a new one, and I changed one. The newest one I can see, um, let's see where it is, number 22, brand new. I have a retailer sitting right in front of me, one of my favorite retailers in the entire world, and he owns number 22. And without number 22, he would be a B-minus operator. And with that 22 that he owns, he's an A-minus operator. And maybe his size and location is keeping him from being an A-plus operator. But number 22 is a new and powerful strategy that I don't know much about, but I do know it works for some folks who are doing it great. Not good, great. So one of the exercises I'm going to ask you folks is to look over this list with your team maybe at, at lunch today, and, and together pick the five that you want to own. Summarize those four retailers that I just re referred to. Let me show you theirs. And oh, by the way, I'm not giving away trade secrets. I never asked Publix, are, are these their five? I just read their mission statement and shopped their stores, and I know them. I guess this. You could guess it, too, if you know and shop their stores. 
Freshest foods, oh my gosh, freaky fresh. Standards, and they advertise it in the produce. They have signs, produce delivered seven days a week. You say things like that when number one is your strategy. Freshest, freaky fresh. Cleanest, oh my gosh, if you've been in their stores, it's never dirty, never. Outside, inside, never dirty. Highest quality, everything they do, from uniforms to packaging, signage, store conditions, high quality. Great place to work, Fortune 100, great place to work. Most personalized service, carry out, no question, awesome, 100%. There they are, Wegmans, freshest. Number nine, powerful strategy. They're my, they're my poster children for that number nine strategy. They send people away to conferences. They, they, they send them to, to countries to learn their products so they become knowledgeable. They call it knowledge-based pricing, knowledge-based price. They have knowledge in every bit of what they do. Great place to work. I think they were in number one in that Fortune 100. Best meal market, are you kidding me? Uh, and then most compelling signature products, number 23. There they are, and right underneath them, and, and I, when I worked on this chart, I, didn't, I realized, look at Dorothy Lane and how similar they are to Wegman's top five. I was really intri intrigued by that. I know Norman Maine is, worships Wegman's so much so, I guess he, he really emulates them, which is okay, hey, hey, you've got to execute it. You can try copying all you want, but you've got to execute it too on a day-in and day-out basis, and Dorothy Lane does. Freshest one and one is the same, knowledgeable nine and nine. I know Norman Maine sends his people to Italy to learn about cheese, for heaven's sakes. They send them away to different places in the country to learn about the products that employees are, are trained to sell. Most personalized service, oh my gosh. Best meal marketer and compelling signature products. Number 23. So I got like one difference here, personalized service and great place to work. Really close, they're good at everything. All these, these three guys are good at everything. But they're freaky great about five things. That's the whole point. And then we have number, uh, Lidl, number four. Um, it took me a while to come up with their five. I had a visit uh, five or six times, but I, I'm on it now. Uh, I believe I have it. They are the low price leader. 10% market price reduction when they move in. 10%, that's the studies. And on categories that they have, it's up to 25%. 25%, you're going to go down 25% on the categories, 10% across the board. Highest quality, oh, oh baby. Wait till I tell you a story on that one. Fastest in and out checkout, oh my gosh. They have aisles that are like 12 feet wide and yours are, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, because you can sell more. Yeah, why do they have 10, 8 foot aisles? Easy to shop. Treasure hunt, they have 4,000 items. The items change. You never know what you're going to get. My wife comes home and she was a big no-no when they first opened up. Now she comes home, look what I got at Lidl. And it's delicious. Haven't had anything that wasn't delicious. And um, so Treasure Hunt and then their signature products. There they are. They own them. They got five. They got five. How many do you have? They got five. How many do you have? So here it is. And I'm uh, really proud of this quote. I hope it helps you understand what I'm getting at. Every profitable and growing retailer is multidimensional. It can't be we're the friendliest. That's not enough anymore. Like every powerful nation that has a strong Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Multidimensional. We have five armed services. Not one. Army wouldn't make it. A Navy wouldn't do it. We have to be multidimensional. Harold, why not six? Don't ask that question, please. Because I'm going to say, you don't have the time, money, or brains to be great at six things. And you don't need six. You need five. Four or five. Why four or five, Harold? A new competitor comes in, and they got three or four, and you only got one. You're done. Do the math. You got two, and they got two. Uh-oh. If their location is closer and they're newer, you lose. But if you have three, four, or five, you're bulletproof. Publix has a really unique attitude. They're not cocky, arrogant, but they, they're as bulletproof as you can get. Somebody else will go out before they will. And they know it because they focus on their five. So um, you just can't pick your five. You've got to have flawless execution. 
flawless, determined execution. You know, well, I pick my five. I want to be the freshest. <laughs> no, that's the hard part. It's like doctor says you got to exercise and take this pill. And you say, okay, I'll take the pill, but do I have to exercise? This one's the exercise seminar. You're going to have to exercise. You're going to have to have flawless execution. I know in your freshness strategy, hey, what if we copied the edible arrangement thing? Good idea. We'll, in our produce department, we'll have edible arrangements for freaky fresh. Yeah, and then three months later, your edible arrangements look like this. I just ordered one. I mean, yay, freaky fresh, but execution. Flaw and that Uno's Pizzeria brought me a great pizza and this glass of water. And the lemon was staring me right in the eye with its eye going, oh, why would the server need to put that in front of me when it was just staring at both of us? It's attention to detail that you got to own. You got to own. And remember I said I'm going to tell you a story about the Lidl thing? Um, they had something that we all tried at one point. Um, when I was a retailer, some executive from a major wholesaler came and spoke to our group and said, you double your money, double your money back guarantee. It's the way. I said, okay, so I went and did it. it. Caused so much hell in my stores. People who wouldn't steal were stealing, faking this lion. Uh, this ro roast beef was tough and crap. I did it for about a year. It was a nightmare. We go to shopping at Lidl. My wife sees this hairspray that looked just like Tresemme, exactly like Tresemme, and it was like one-fourth the price, which was like one-tenth the price in a department store. So she tried it. And in the fine print in one of their ads, I saw something about, oh, yeah, there it is on the receipt, double guarantee. I said, well, we do that with fresh, but nobody does that with groceries. But when you're freaky about quality, which I showed you one of their five strategies, why wouldn't you do that? So I said, honey, would you do me a favor? When you go to Lidl again, would you return that spray and see what happens? And she said, but I, I want it. <laughs> I said, well, we can buy it again. I just want to see what happens. Went to the checkout. She had bought a few other items. She said, oh, by the way, I had this hairspray. Eh, it didn't quite meet my, uh, my desire. Didn't complain big time. Just uh, didn't quite what I hoped for. I'm so sorry. And gift card. Twice what she paid on a gift card, no questions asked. That's freaky great execution, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you and I would have said, well, uh, what's wrong with it? And when did you buy it? And... Are you sure you want to return it? Or <laughs> there's, a town, there's a chain in my town that I, years ago, saw a double your money back guarantee on all fresh product. Just fresh, just fresh. This is everything. So my wife bought a chicken, a, 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 a Purdue oven stuffer. And she opens it, she brings it home, and I'm in the office working, and, and she opens it up, and oh, there's an odor. She comes into the office and said, honey, is this any good? And I said, oh, my gosh, I can smell it from two rooms away. No, it's not any good. She said, oh, no, what do I got to do? This is for dinner. I said, it's okay. I want to get a good haircut. Uh, I'll take it to the store and get, get our money back, get a new chicken. And she said, you don't mind? I said, no, I, I love stories, so I, I see what I can learn from them. They have a double your money back guarantee. I can't wait. I go back to the store with my little boy, and oh, my gosh, he's 24 now. He was in my arm like this, and I had the chicken here, and we walk into the store right to the service desk. And I said to the lady behind the counter, I said, ma'am, my wife was here just a few hours ago and bought this chicken, and it is really bad. And she grabbed the bag, opened it up, and she went, whoa, never said she was sorry. And I said, um, so may I, she said, would you like your refund or, uh, or another chicken? And I said, uh, uh, can I get both? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, don't you have a double your money back guarantee? And she said, what? And I said, don't you have a money back, double your money back guarantee? And, and she said, um, she looked puzzled. I said, turn around. There was a big sign right behind her on the wall. I said, turn around. And she, she went like this. And, and she said, oh, that? And I said, yeah. And she said, oh, that's if you're really mad. <laughs> I swear, ladies and gentlemen, it's a true story. So that's what we do when we double your money back guarantee, and that's what Lidl does. So that's ah, a good example of being freaky, flawless execution at the store level. So 
Anybody speak a little French? I have a destination wedding coming up in May in France and six years of high school and junior high French I got a bone up on. Raison d'etre is a word. I loved it and it's an English meaning to it. Look it up in the dictionary. It's the most important reason or purpose for someone's existence. Raison d'etre. What is your raison d'etre? And it can't be that we're the friendliest only. I'd love you to have the friendliest, but it can't be just that. It's like going on a date, want someone to go out with you when you're dating and say, well, I'm nice, but I smell and I don't dress really well and I'm impolite. And I'm not really smart. I have no personality. You got to have more than one dimension. So what is your raison, raison d'etre? I'm in Minneapolis airport not too long ago working on this seminar, and I'm walking from my gate to gate, and I see this bookstore. Look at the sign. That's the raison d'etre. We're closest to you. If that's all you got going for you, we're in deep caca. We got to have something a little bit more meaningful than being the closest to the person walking by. Or, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have a raison d'etre. You're just trying to keep things together. You're just trying to hold the, the boat up together until somebody wants to sail away with it. We got to get our raison d'etre. And I'm very, I hope, uh, Terry, where, Terry, you, you come in, Terry? There's your, Terry, Terry Baker, this is uh, Terry and Gary. Hi, Gary. Oh, good, you're all there. This is a wonderful team, and this is their store. And I had the honor, uh, they're in a share group, of, or three of mine, and, and I had the honor to go work with, with them. And look at, they won more awards than, than I'd ever dream of winning, and that's not their purpose. They just want to execute and be care, care, cool in their community and be part of the community. And, and, and so about a year and a half ago, not to help them come out of the weeds, just to help them get a little bit of a unified focus. That's all I tried to do with this process. And so we worked as a team, and these are Baker's Five. In fact, I had to call them recently and say, did you change them? And I was so impressed with Gary and Terry when we started the process and they said, Harold, can we just do our four to start with? And I said, God bless you. What a wonderful attitude. I had one company say, can we start with three? We didn't even know what strategic planning meant when you joined, when you came, before you came here. I said, sure. Right now you're great at one thing. To get to three in a couple of years is quite an undertaking. So when Terry and Gary said, can we start with four, and, and Mark, a great operations fellow, um, I said, sure you can. You can start with whatever you want, but no, we have to get to five. Terry, I have a microphone here. She, uh, oh, and watch, this is last night, folks. Terry came by to say hi last night, and I'm so proud of her and them. Terry and Gary were named the international, thank you, thank you, international retailer of the year. And, and they got this before the process, but my point is this process is going to keep them there. They, they got there on their own through hard work and brains and a little luck, I'm sure, but this process is going to help them keep them there. Terry, you want to say something about the process, good or bad? Because or, you're a retailer talking to retailers, please. Well, I, like many, when, if you really see this grid, it looks a little overwhelming when you first start looking at it. But when you start breaking it down and first narrow down those five kind of points of differentiation, um, it really began to start to come together. Um, one of the things that we did as we started to look at this is that we had a focus group or a training with all of our department managers, all of us collectively together. And uh, the three of us, our general manager, Gary and myself, um, took this one opportunity and it was a real step of faith on our part and as we went through, we looked at those 25 points and said, what are we really different about? We discussed it with all of our department managers and said, what are we really good at? So as we went through that process, we had post-it notes all over the wall of um, the room that we were holding the meeting in. And as we went through, everybody had their chance to basically say, we're best at this, no, we're best at that and then everybody voted. Gary didn't vote, Terry didn't vote, and Mark didn't vote. The interesting thing is that we had sat at the table, you know, kind of off to the side, and had circled our key points of difference. Guess what? 
they were all the same. So that was our starting point um, in the process. Then as part of it, then we started identifying what are the things that we do or what are the things that we can do to basically support what we're doing in this particular, um, you know, whatever it is. So in, in one of the areas, it was um, let's be the best place to work. So a couple things, and, and Harold was a huge, huge proponent of this, and that was having not evaluations, not performance reviews, but success plans. And, and I can tell you, we started it. It is hard to start it. We got training on how to do a proper success plan. I can tell you a year and a half later, it was one of the smartest decisions that we made. Right. And if you ask my staff in terms of, which we do, um, ask them what was the best thing we did, it was said starting success plans. Because we really began to listen to our associates and how they made a difference in our company. Some of the things that we did, we were already doing. You know, it was greeting, but we did greeting a little better. We opened up the first checkout, and, and the cashier said hello to, um, to the customers as they came in, as they were kind of the designated greeter. But guess what? We also added the last checkout. And so now we are greeter, and, and I walk in every time I'm in the store, the last checkout's open, and I said, do you know you have the most important spot in the store. You know, sometimes it's an ego thing for us as owners. Um, one of the things that I began doing was um, being a part of uh, working as a clerk. And uh, it, it's hard. i got a full life. I've got full business. I've got NGA work. I've got IGA work. We're um, trying every day to kind of figure out the financial end of it. Is my cash flow there? But I take um, one shift um, in, and rotate from the store every month. Um, and I usually do it in the fall, so I, it's my kind of fall project, and go work in one of the departments in my store. Now, I don't know what I'm doing. And so if you've seen Undercover Boss, that was me, because they know way, way, way more about it than I do. But you know, it was funny. Um, I had a situation, I think it was in October, where I went and got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, went, drove an hour away to be at my uh, Mount Vernon store. And uh, what did they put me on? They put me on filling um, the Long John's or cream sticks is what they are. I had no idea we did 300 a day. And then also come to find out, not only did we do 300 a day, the pastry filler was broke. So guess what? They've got a new pastry filler today. So there are just tons of things that have helped us a little by little to be better. Thank so. you so much, Terry. I appreciate that. So, so Terry, thank you. So Terry and her team uh, picked best place to work or great place to work as one of their five strategies. Well, that's good. They picked it. Then I said, you got to have awesome execution at, at some programs. And one of the programs was work as a clerk. Another program <clears throat> would be uh, some kind of, of, of training program uh, so that they could be better at greeting the customer. So that's what they do. I, I like this process. Thanks again, Terry. I like this. I liken this process to the uh, movie uh, Willy Wonka. And the, how many have seen that movie, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Isn't that a great movie? Uh, what's your favorite uh, scene in that uh, movie? You remember? A lot of people say when it's when Charlie finds the ticket. The finally. Charlie goes through a million candy bars and everyone's looking for the gold ticket because then you get oh, all kinds of stuff from the chocolate factory. Well, that may be your favorite scene, but ladies and gentlemen, let me take a moment and show you my favorite scene. Mrs. Curtis, remember Mrs. Curtis scene? I'll give them anything, anything they want. All I want is to have Harold back. See, you know what? Maybe, maybe you want to see that. I, I just can't see this enough. I'll give them anything, this is anything the, they want. See, that's the only time in the history of the world that Harold, the name Harold, was used in a positive way. It's a, like Fat Albert and Weird, Weird Harold kind of thing. So that's my favorite, but the, the concept of the golden ticket, 
that once you got the golden ticket, we, we, are, we are good to go. And I liken the mission matrix, I call it now, the mission matrix as, as kind of the golden ticket. And there it is, and I have 100 copies on the table, and I even have a golden version for you, a golden version. So here's how it works. You and your team take our list of 25 points of difference. How do we pick the right one? Okay, be patient, I'm getting there. There is a gray box, and this is how we choose which strategy is right for us. Question number one, and these are in priority order, any no vote vetoes dis disallows that strategy. Any one no kills it. It's not an option any longer. So let's, pay, let's pick one, being a, a great place to work. Is being the greatest place to work something you personally want to do? Nah, you know, I think employees are a pain in the butt. They're a necessary evil. Then say no and move on and pick another strategy. Oh, no, Harold, I believe they're our greatest resource. Okay, move question number two. Is being a great place to work something your customers in your area really care about? Yeah, I really believe people in our town really like seeing people they know and can relate with, not constant turnover. Good. There's two yeses. And then number three, is your company, little or big, physically, financially, and mentally capable of executing that strategy? And the answer to this one, I'm sure, is yes. You have the heart, the customers have the want, you have the ability, bingo. We have a perfect strategy for us. That's how we picked it at Gary and Terry stores. That's how we picked it. I had everyone read those three questions. Cleanest, question number one. Do you really, something you really love being clean? Cleanest, not clean, cleanest, yeah. Let's go look at your car. Let's go look at your car. Let's go look at your apartment. Look at the way you're dressed, come on. Come on, it's not in your DNA. Come on, it's okay, it's not in your DNA. No, let's then veto it. So we ask those three questions to, uh, of ourselves and we pick our five strategies. And ladies, oh, I love the way that came in like that. I did that all by myself, watch. Now watch, what are those red arrows? One day on a plane, after creating this list for its 17th revision, I got thinking, how many of these strategies can we as little independents beat the big guys on? Because, oh, these big guys have unfair advantage. They have all this. Wait a minute. How many of these 25 can we beat the big guys on? And those are the red arrows. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 12 strategies out of 25. Not to say you can't be great at other ones, but you're going to have a, you know, the freshest. Come on, the freshest at number one. I didn't give that one. Although Dorothy Lane Market owns it, you can be great at it, but it's not, it's not going to be easy, easy attainment. You, you're going to have to really get a little lucky and work really hard to do it. The other 12, you're going to have to work hard, but oh my gosh, community? Oh my God, Baker's owns that one. Knowledge, uh, knowledgeable staff, I can teach my people. Great place to work, kid friendly, personalized service. I've got 12 strategies. That should be so encouraging to you. As maybe a little dis depressing earlier on, this should be, oh my gosh. Now we get our team together and we pick from the 25 and maybe four of the five are out of these 12. We're on our way, folks. You still got to love it, though. You can't be ready to sell. You got to love it. As I mentioned, I was in the business. Now, I just found that over the holiday in a box of stuff. My business card, an article that was written about me as I got out of graduate school and started to. Uh, so I was a retailer, ladies and gentlemen. That's a little bit about my past. Most of you knew. This is a little bit about my past. I didn't want anyone to know. This was last year, or I got a little trouble, but at the Excalibur. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Um, no. um, this is, if I was coming back in the business, I got to ask some people, Harold, if you were coming back, what would be your five? Well, I spent over an hour writing my new mission statement, and I wrote that. Um, it's to offer all of our guests a uniquely satisfying combination of delicious foods, really nice people, and delightful surprises each and every time they visit. We are an employee we are employee dedicated to we are employer dedicated to its people. We work diligently to ensure our associates are treated with the utmost respect 
and be given opportunities to grow personally and professionally. We will be a store that is passionately connected to its community through personal involvement and shared events, bringing people together with good food and enjoyable experience. Experiences is our mission. I wrote that as if I said, so I'm going back into business and that would be my mission statement. And if you look carefully, indirectly or directly, there are five strategies and here are the five. And, and Gary and Terry, you're, you're, I think we're one off of your five that you picked and we one off of mine. There are my five. I want to show you how this works, folks. There are my five and I took the, the time to list programs. And I have copies for this at you in one of the three booths I'll be in in the next two days. Come by if you want to see what I can do. Because I want you to create a 25-page binder that will guide your rest of your history. First page, mission statement. Page two, strategy one, program one. In my case, community connected, school tours. Page six, great place to work, program one, team huddles, and so on. Folks. We do these 25 things, come hell or high water, to a 90% execution rate or better, you'll be bulletproof. Yes, it's work, like exercising. You'd rather just take the pill. This is work, but this is the answer. And you're probably halfway there. Terry, when she presented, she said, we went through a list of what we're great at, or good or great at now. But it doesn't have to be what you're great at. Now, it's what you want to be great at, too. I work with one company. They weren't great at anything. They were good at everything, but not great at anything. So we had a pick, and we picked four. But we weren't great at anything now. But starting today, we're going to become greater. And in two or three years, we'll be great at it. When we focus every bit of our money, time, and attention, and brain power on these 25 points of programs. So... There they are, that's, that's my matrix, I was getting back into it. Let me show you up close what they would look like. Strategy six, the most community connected. Like Terry and Gary, I'm going after that one. And like Harmon's, one of the greatest retailers west of the Mississippi, they, they do focus groups to learn from their customers. So did I. I would definitely, school tours would definitely be one of my programs under community connected. Every month I'd have a, group, a classroom of kids coming through my store, I did. And every, every major department had a little event for the kids to, to see. I had a big map of the world behind the produce cooler, excuse me, produce case, and an easel hidden behind it. And when the kids made their way to the produce department, the produce manager proudly would set up the easel and then put the map of the world on the easel. Then he would take a banana and show them where it comes from. Take a kiwi and show them where it comes from. Oh my gosh, the teachers loved us because we're taking real life and making it a school lesson out of it. Oh, I'd absolutely do school tours. And like the great folks at Coborns, oh my gosh, are they great. The sack hunger, the bag hunger program. I'm having this every day of my life going forward, not just the holiday. I always say hungry people are hungry after Christmas. Keep it going. I'd have a, a rack display with two price points, a $5 bag, a $10 bag, and I'd have a different color bag for the pets. I'd take food for the pets. I'm community connected through Food Bank and the SPCA. And that's not a lot of money. A lot of bit of attention to detail, yeah, but those are two programs I'm going to own. Number 10 program, great place to work, just like Terry and Gary. They, they had it too. I love this. <laughs> Safety first, uh, except for the SEC football schedule. Then we got to put that up first. Isn't that great? Safety first, but let's cover it up with that. <laughs> Oh, God. So they're not really serious about it. In my world, I'm going to have a huddle every morning and a huddle every day at 4.30. One employee from every department standing in a circle in an area of the store, and we're going to talk about today. Ten-minute huddle. Everybody gets one minute. We're going, to, we're going to brief each other about how the day is going or how it's going to go. Who needs help? What's new? Huddle. I am going to have cross-training. Cross-training is a untapped resource for you. Nobody in the room has a cross-training program written on paper. If you do, I'll give you a copy of all four of my books and in exchange for a copy of your cross-training program. Nobody does it. Nobody does it, and we got to. It eliminates boredom, for heaven's sakes, and these guys are masters at it. I asked, oh, 20 employees who work at Lidl on the side when I'm pushing a cart, 
I run into one at, one at a time. I say, well, what do you like most about a Lidl? Well, it's new. They, a lot of them say it's new. It's kind of different new. Okay. After that, we, we're not stuck in any one spot. We do the whole store. No one's hired to do anything. They're hired to do everything. That sign's going to appear in your, one of your empty lots around your town, and that's just scared the bejesus out of you. Look at the pay rate, number one. And number two, there's not one employee who had a, a bad word to say about this new company coming in. So there's an incentive to take great place to work as your strategy. And tomorrow, I believe it's at 10 o'clock, folks, I'm doing a breakout session on this, my newest book. And there are, I mentioned three vendors uh, that have nice enough to purchase 300 copies of this to give away at those three booths. And uh, be, have you sign one if you'd like, but if you pick great place to work as one of your strategies, get a copy of that tomorrow or today at one of the three booths. Okay. How about friendly, number 15, the friendliest place in town? <laughs> Look at that door. Hey! Meet and deli employees only. Meet and deli employees only. Did I tell you meet and deli employees only? Did you walk by that 17 times today and not notice how unfriendly that looks? I was <laughs> like, golly. And even this is unfriendly, folks. In my world, my employee team is going to face upstream. That's the program underneath friendly, facing upstream. That guy's facing the wrong direction. Anyone packing out the cart or rack has to know the flow of traffic comes in a majority of one direction, 80-20. Oh, yeah, they come in all directions, but 80-20 typically is what happens. And when I'm packing out like this and someone's coming from this direction, what does that say to the customer? Don't bother me, right? I'm busy. If I learn to pack out this way, this says, if you need help, let me know. Face upstream, I call. That's a program. That's a pro. Execute it 90% of the time and watch how friendly your scores go up. Friendly. And then my favorite, newest idea that somebody taught me three or four years ago, and I love it. Every employee, every day, get, donates 15 minutes per four-hour shift or more. If they work eight hours, it's still 15 minutes per shift. 15 minutes, they donate it to the store. That's right. Seafood guy takes a tray of cookies and walks around the store. Hi, my name is Aaron, or my name is Eddie. Um, would you enjoy, would you like a, a, a fresh baked cookie? Or uh, as, as shrimp samples, whatever. It's just out and about, greeting the customer. If we had 40 employees working a shift today, 40 times 15, 10 hours of coverage of someone roaming the store being nice to people. Do you know a customer who is engaged by an associate sincerely spends 18% more than one who isn't? Fact. Any employee who engages a customer sincerely, not like, where's the restroom over there? That's not what I'm talking about. You let me know if you want me to slice this thinner for, thinner for you. You let me know if I can get that for, help you with that. Thank you very much for shopping with us today. That's a sincere engagement. 18% increase in sales, that customer. I love out and about. That's a program. So how about number 23, signature products? I don't know if I'm going after the butt nuggets, but it's a cute name. My signature product's going to look like this, an easy one. Infused water. Oh, my gosh, we got rotten oranges and lemons we can slice off the bad part and float it in some water and put it in four stations around the store. Well, I wanted to buy it from the pop machine. Oh, shut up, a pop machine. Come on. Freaky Fresh and Friendly are two of your strategies. That supports both of them. Have that in the produce department. Have it at the front end of the store. Have it in the back third corner of the store. A customer who drinks or eats something spends up to 50% longer in the store. That's a fact. They just get, oh, look at how pretty this is. Oh, and they take a drink out of it. Oh, that's so nice. But you got to have the cups. You got to have a trash can. You got to keep it looking nice. That's the flawless execution I'm talking about. And then a signature product like the cookie. That's a little bit more complicated than butt nuggets. It's a metropolitan market, though, and they do a wonderful job with that. Or, as you see at booth 1221, they're one of our sponsors on the books. Gold medal popcorn. I'm, I'm putting a popcorn section or a popcorn machine in my... It's fresh. It's fun. I can make flavors that nobody else has. It's going to be a signature product that is absolutely high profit and absolutely fun to have in the store. Absolutely. Number 25, the last one of my five. The most promotional excitement. 
I could own that one. Walmart doesn't do events. Walmart doesn't have contests. Walmart doesn't do that kind of stuff. Kroger doesn't even do that much of that. It's too much to bother. There's too many stores. We can have that crazy animal thing in the parking lot or smoker thing in the front door on weekends. It seems like after grand opening, grand reopening, we lose our energy to, to do events and do things. Not like Price Chopper Henhouse in, in Kansas City, though. Look at that end cap. That's an end cap. My gosh, a truckload savings. Truckload savings display. That's ah, promotional excitement. What I'm going to do, I'm going to own the new item market. Every, every item I have is going to have a new item. I'm going to have six inch perpendicular to the shelf everywhere, 200, two or 300 in my store. I'm going to own the new item image. New items are fabulous. New items are high in profit. New items make me look fresh. New items make me look exciting. 18,000 new items were created last year. I'm sure our three support sponsors of this morning session have new items they'd love us to promote. In grocery and in fresh departments. That's what I'm going to own that one. And I'm, big, I'm a big fan of kids. My kids club program would put me on the map as far as a retailer. And I had no children at the time, but I loved them. And I started a kids club program. And you can have a treasure chest at every register. Where the kids get a prize. You can do all kinds of things. This is me and my son's school. I went Johnny Appleseed reading class, kids corner, uh, shop right, uh, scrunchy club. I mean, it's endless. So there's... There's my mission. Uh, folks, I'm not, I'm not great. I just wanted to fill one out for you to see what it's like. I couldn't give you a, another competitor of yours. You can have mine, though. You see what it looks like. They're all clear. They're all easy, easy to understand. Challenging to execute, maybe. But you got one mission. You got five strategies. And you know why now. One's not enough. Six is too many. And then we have five programs each. There's the formula. One mission statement, five strategies, five programs for each strategy. It's as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. So the point of difference with Publix, Wegmans had five, Dorothy Lane's got five that they own, Lidl has five, and my future store or one that you and I work on together on the phone can, can be those, that five. So where do we go from here? Your mission, your mission matrix. Your mission matrix. Now, who cares about mine or anybody else's? I care about yours. And I just heard my wife sent me this. It's such a cute expression. So I, I just ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. So what comes first? Being great and then getting the mission statement? Or the ma mission matrix? Or having the mission matrix to make you great? I'm sure Wegman's never heard of a mission matrix. I'm sure Publix, I didn't give Publix their six points of difference. Dorothy Lane Market, I said he was a friend, but he didn't learn that from me. I just want to make it clear for you, ladies and gentlemen, and I truly believe the mission matrix comes first. Let's get that going. And just <laughs> yeah, don't wait for your wholesaler to help you either. Or don't wait for the, you're hoping for something to happen. You got to make it happen. So here's the what. The mission matrix. Here is the how, and I've never done this before. Brand new when I got copies of this. It's on the website, NJ website. Here are 12 steps that Gary and Terry and her team followed with me on this. And I can help you on the phone. You don't need me there. I can help you on the phone. You don't even need me on the phone. It's right there. I even start with current dates. Draft your mission statements. Number two says schedule a conference call with Coach Lloyd. There's my cell phone number. Watch this. And there are, there are two strategies that I, uh, two action plans that I mentioned, four and nine. Let me show you number four. This is what the, Terry said they did. They got the managers together and we talked about what do we want to be great at. That's number four on that list. And number nine is the, once we're done, let's post it on the bulletin board in all our break rooms so all our employees can start embracing it and feeling it, understanding it. So I've never done this before in my life and it's probably, well, I hope it works. I have set six days of my life apart, aside. And I would ask you, if you'd like, for one hour, as an NGA member, you call me after you review the notes and handouts online, get your, download your copy, and call me. Pick an hour, call my office, and say, I'd like to have Wednesday the 21st at 2 o'clock. And we talk for an hour with your team and uh, set you on your way. That was number two on my action plan suggestion. If you want to take a picture of that uh, to remind you what days are available, I'll be in my office doing work, waiting for your call, knowing that you're going to call at a certain time. Or come by one of the three booths 
and we'll pick a time together there. That's the call schedule. And here are the booths that I will be in. You want to get a picture of that for your free book. Today, 1230 to 2, I'll be in booth 118. That SIB is a company that helps you reduce your monthly costs, your trash, your laundry, and so on. Gold medal, the popcorn people from 2.30 to 4. Booth, the show floor closes at 5. 4 to 5, I'll be in Doug Maddenberg's retail feedback group booth, number 7, right by the door. Tomorrow, I'll be there giving away the free book and coaching on the Mission Matrix idea. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, now let me go to my, let me go to my team and ask them first what they got. One thing that you, one question of me or one takeaway. Jacob, we grab the mic and you'll lead us off. So this was a lot fast. I only have 61 minutes. And uh, so you can stand up so they can see how handsome you are. Oh, anyway, there you go. J Jacob. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> Just one minute, 30 seconds, whatever. What's the one takeaway or one question you have of me? Okay. So um, full disclosure, I've met him before and chose to come back again. So, um, <laughs> But uh, we've talked about some of these strategic points of difference and we have spent some time with Harold at our store and that was a little over a year ago and so we've done some things implementing and whatnot and uh, it's been just over a year and so for this me it's just reinvigorating to get excited about working on it more. I've done 65 or about 70 reviews with our employees that we hadn't. So you chose that. great place to work as well? Yeah great place to work, friendliest, community focused, environmentally and socially responsible and promotionally exciting. Those are our five. Hey, hey, he knew them all on fire. That's something, that's a start. You didn't know that a year ago, so it's already starting to be here, top of mind. Good deal, all five listed. Go ahead. Yeah, and so, um, you know, just seeing this today, it just gets us excited about, you know, focusing on implementing more things. So the first year, I think, it, or I know it was successful. We have a good uh, trajectory, and so now it's just uh, implementing more things and taking it to the next level and baby steps. Well, baby steps, uh, uh, Thoughtful baby steps. Uh, that's no worries. I, I say three to five years before you can say you're great at three to five things. Three to five years before you can really say you're great at three to five things. So don't think it's a, that's why I don't like this seminar that much. I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, you didn't either. Um, because you like the quick fix. Uh, we all do, but this isn't a quick fix. I gave you some quick fix ideas, but hopefully they fit in the frame. Thank yeah, you. So stick to well, it. Thank you very much, Jacob. Courtney? Question or best takeaway? Uh, best takeaway, Harold. <clears throat> we come to all your shows and we watch, and sometimes it takes us a while to get, like we told you about the hand baskets. Yes. The hand baskets. We took it, we watched it, we watched it. One day, Dad and I sat, and he said, we're going to do this. And we did, and it worked good. We talked about it, we talked about it, we talked about it, but we never wrote it down. You never so wrote it down? We never wrote it down. Okay. But we talk about it. And so we'll be in the store, and Dad and I will fight to get to a customer give them a hand basket. Well, and what Courtney's talking about, I teach having four to six stacks of carry baskets strategically located around the store on a base with a sign that says, for your convenience, grab a basket. And the top basket is cocked at 45 degrees, so it suggests the customer to take it. Important. I even teach feathering your ad in every basket. When you replace a basket, put an ad in it. But then teach the people that this is where they go, and each stack is a different color, so you know where to return them. That's a program. Having carry baskets is not a program. Having four to six stacks different color with flyers and cock the handle at 45 degrees, that's a program. So we didn't write it down. Okay, so, so I didn't teach some of this stuff. This is a brand new handout that you're going to get online with NGA's website. So don't feel bad. Maybe it was my fault not teaching it. Carrie. So unfortunately, we tried. It worked really well, but we didn't write it down. Okay. So I'm standing in a store, and I thought I'm going to try something. I'm not going to go grab the basket and give it to the customer. I'm going to see what the employees do. Well, unfortunately... About 25% of the employees went and handed a basket. And so the other day I sat and I said, hey, I've got to, we've got to work on that again. So this makes me say I've got to write it down. We've got to practice it. We've got to talk about it. And we've got to show it. Because Wonderful. we do a safety program. And we write it down. There you go. And, and it, it works. works. There you go. But I don't write this Bingo. down and it didn't work. So like that's, any of That's us. mine. Especially teenagers, Courtney. Teenagers. I, I heard a teenage psychologist say, you tell, you tell a teenager four things, they don't even hear two of them. They don't hear three and four. And it's not they're bad people. I had three of them. They just don't hear it. So you got to commit to it in writing. And then on the break room, they're staring at it. And then you refer to it in everything you do. Yes, RF. Okay. Um, well, we've got a new competitor coming into one of our towns. So Who is it? Uh, Dollar General. Okay, good for you. So, uh, you know, we've, we've already started laying out uh, 
10 things that we, we want to be good at, but this definitely helps me drill down with them and try and decide how we want to be good at it and, and what do we want to do going forward. And there's 12 steps to follow. And it's like four months away from beginning to end. On that sheet that you saw, there was like four months. And they're not rocket science. I'm not a really bright guy. But I've been watching these great retailers. And what do they have in common? They have a unified focus. And then I said, okay, what are they great at? And I start writing them down. Then I looked in their stores and go, this is why they do this. This is why they do this. When you say there's 10 things you want to be good at, RF, I'm going to just, uh, just uh, clarify. You have to be good at 25 things. Right. But I want you to be freaky great at five. Pick the freaky great five. Okay, thank you, folks, very much. Um, so you stop by and get a golden. I got a golden ticket for you. A golden. Okay. Uh, did I go? Did I go ahead? Back on the screen. So let me. I, oh, I wanted to summary. In summary, raise the curtain. The first title was how to exist with coexist with a hard discounter. But the one that I really like and I think applies even more is how to remain relevant for anybody. Dollar. I said good for you when I said Dollar. You said Dollar General. Some people poo-poo them. They're not really a competitor. Oh, hell, they're not. There's another monster up there. They keep coming. They keep coming. Remaining relevant. Remember the blacksmith? No, you don't? Well, that's why. Travel agents, okay? Duh. Cab drivers, duh. Are we next? Are we next? I want to remain relevant. I want to, and you will. Grow your customer base or die, I read a couple of weeks ago in this article. Die, you just can't sit and hope we got to grow because there's more monsters coming. You know there are more monsters coming. You know the totem pole theory in marketing? It says you don't have to be number one in the market, but you can't be the last one. So don't be down there. Work on your five points of difference so that you get up in two, three, or, or one area. And don't be down at the bottom because he or she is going when Lidl comes to town. They're going to take 150 out of your market. Can your market lose 150 and you survive? If you can, then you're in number two or three position. You're not in the bottom. So just when you thought rock bottom was rock bottom, you just found out it has a basement. But here comes, here comes Lidl or the next guy. And you can get upset about it, but you can't be more upset than Freddie. He can't even open because he doesn't have a manager. But Sparky's the competitor is open. What the heck is that all about? You think you have problems? I think Freddie's got more. So here we go. Here, hope is not a strategy. You now know that for sure. The golden ticket, folks, okay, that's a TV show or a TV movie, but this is your golden ticket, ladies and gentlemen. Here is your real life golden ticket. A thoughtfully thorough mission matrix is your golden ticket. And as I turn older, I want to remain relevant. And I thought I was a pretty good teacher at one point. And in Aruba last, last summer, I was on, on, a, on assignment, believe it or not. But I did take one afternoon to go meet the flamingos. And this guy just wasn't the brightest flamingo. And I was trying to teach him, but he didn't listen. I hope you listen to me on this one. Maybe I'm on the way down, but listen to me before I go. And this may sound a little morbid, but there is a website where you can design your own tombstones. And I've been working on mine for a couple of years now. And on the front of my tombstone, I want this. I've said this a hundred times to people who ask. Here lies, there's not a better father in this room than me. There's not a better one. You may be as good as me if you're lucky. There's nobody better. But on the back of my tombstone, I want this. And I'm, I'm kind of serious about this. Dead serious, actually. Get it? Dead serious. Who gave the business world this matrix. This is the one sheet that I, I would like to say when I'm gone outlives me and helps more people. And that's the handout that you're going to get when you download it from the NGA website. It's the, it's the matrix. It's the 25. It's the action plan. And there's a schedule calling uh, opportunities for you. So be defined, be determined, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, my company does have a, a, a purpose too, a unified focus. And I hope this, help, this seminar helps you achieve it. My company has a mission statement is to learn more ways to help others in more ways and to provide a powerful push in the right direction. I hope this session has helped you do just that. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful show now, and I look forward to seeing you later. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us at 11 a.m. back in this room for our industry leader panel discussion. The thing about love, 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 it'll make you do some crazy things. The thing about love, 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 is you know it when you feel it. And that's the thing about love. 
Everybody tells us that we are too young for love But they don't know what it is like to be young and us Ages are nothing but a number And my love lasts longer than the summer So let's move them haters up out of the way